Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable and very easy beginner friendly knit socks. So I do have a PDF for this pattern. You can find that below this video, but I'm going to show you step by step everything you need to know to make these adorable knit socks. I am going to be changing colors for the heels and toes just to show you how to change colors, uh, but you could always do them all in one color as well. This will be a very beginner friendly tutorial. I am going to go very slow step by step and I will break it up into sections so that you have a chance to complete each section before we move on to the next. All right, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So for today's video, you're going to need a few different supplies. You're not going to need all this. I'm just showing it to you so you kind of know what your options are. You're obviously going to need a little pair of scissors. That's super handy. Either some sort of ruler or you can use an actual sock measuring stick. These are really great because you can stick them in your socks and measure exactly so that you can tell that you're getting the right fit for your specific foot. So this is really fun. This one I purchased online from Knit. I think it's called Knitography Farms. I'll make sure to link it below, um, but it's just a die cut sock stick and so really handy. You're also gonna maybe need some stitch markers. For today's video, we probably won't really need them, but I did wanna share some of my favorites. These little flower stitch markers from All Stitch Studios are one of my favorites because they are adorable. They're like tiny little flowers. I also have this flight of the stitch markers. This is from Coco Knits and they have a variety of different shapes and sizes in there. Just these little basic round ones are probably my favorite and they just pop off and then they have a variety of colors of little stitch markers in there for you to use. So those are a lot of fun, but whatever you have is probably fine. And for these vanilla socks, we probably won't really be needing our stitch markers, but if you're doing any kind of textured sock or color work, a lot of times these can come in very handy. All right, you're also gonna need some needles. Now, there's a few different ways to knit socks. Today, I'm gonna be using DPN needles. You can also use a really long cable and stitch them on Magic Loop. Usually you have to make a few concessions in patterns to use Magic Loop, so I'm not gonna be doing those in this video since we're really beginner friendly here. We're gonna just stick with the DPNs. You can also knit socks using these little nine inch circulars. These are tiny little circular needles. So they've got the <laughs> circular right here. And as you can see, the needle tips are just really short. Um, I am knitting a pair of socks on these. However, this is not my favorite method. For some reason, these tiny little needles just sort of hurt my hands. But I just wanted to show them to you so that you can see that there's a few different ways to do this. I know a lot of people who love these and it just makes it really easy, especially when you're doing a plain sock like this, because you can just go around and around and around and you don't have to mess around with switching needles. But today we're going to be using these needles. I think it's a little bit be better when you're a beginner. Uh, to explain the process, so that's what we're gonna be using in today's tutorial. So in today's video, I'm gonna be using US 4 and US 5 needles. Now, typically when you're knitting socks, the cuff portion of your sock, so this bit right here that's stretchy, you'll knit in a smaller size needle just to make it a little bit tighter, a little bit more snug on your leg, and then you'll use the larger needle for the body section of your foot. And so I will be using two. If for some reason you only have one size of needle, I would say just use them, don't worry about it. Um, your cuff might just be a little bit loose, but that's totally fine. So don't go out and buy new needles for this. Just see how you like it first and then you can add to your supplies based on your needs. So let's talk a little bit about the yarn. Now typically you're gonna be knitting socks in sock weight or fingering weight yarn, which is what this is. This is a cute little sock kit that I purchased from Chelsea Lux. It's a hand dyed yarn. And this one is called Frozen. She put it out this Christmas and I thought it was so cute. I had to have it, uh, but I did wanna kind of show you up close the width of the yarn. Now sock or fingering weight yarn is pretty thin yarn and you can kind of see right there. If I put it over my finger, it's gonna be a pretty thin yarn. A lot of sock patterns, or I would say even most sock patterns use fingering weight yarns. You can also use a DK weight yarn, which is just slightly thicker. I actually prefer DK weight socks because I think they're a lot faster to knit and then they're also a little bit squishier. Uh, but most, I think, patterns are gonna request a fingering or sock weight yarn. So I did want to show that to you. This is actually a sock kit, so you would knit the body in this color and they have this cute little contrast pink for the cuff or the heels and toes or however you wanna do that little accent color. So I wanted to show that because it's a lot of fun. 
In today's video, I'm actually gonna be using this Coastal Cotton yarn. This is a much thicker weight yarn. As you can see right there, this is actually a medium four weight yarn. You can see that right here on the back of my yarn ball. And when you purchase your yarn, it will tell you the weight, which is the thickness of the yarn, and then it will also tell you recommended needle and crochet hook sizes on the back as well. So whatever yarn that you get, you're gonna to wanna to look on the back of that yarn to see what is recommended as far as needle size goes. I'm actually gonna be using this. It's the same yarn that I used to knit these socks. These are my Jolly Socks. I put these out this Christmas, this past Christmas, and they're so fun. They're really squishy. They knit up really fast because the yarn is so nice and thick. And then the other reason I'm using this yarn in today's video is because it's a little bit thicker, so I think it's gonna be easier for you to see my stitches and what I'm doing. Um, but I did wanna show you the fingering and sock weight yarn because I think most patterns are actually gonna request this. I'm just using this so that you can see it easier in today's video. And like I said, it does make some fun squishy socks as well. I'm gonna be doing a separate color for my toes and heels because I think it will just be really cute. Plus that way I can show you how to change colors in your knitting. So this particular one is called Watermelon. It's the exact same type of yarn. So I'm gonna be using these two skeins in today's tutorial, but you can also just use one color if you don't wanna be doing a different color for your heels and toes. So I'm gonna set aside our things we don't need um, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start off with our smaller needles, like I said, because we are going to be knitting these socks top down. There are patterns where you start at the toe and work your way up, but for today's purposes, and I think when you're new, um, this one just seems a little bit easier. So that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm going to get my yarn out and I will put a link on where you can get this yarn below. I purchased it from my local uh, knit shop. It was called Piney Creek Yarn and they have a ton of different colors of these. So as you can see, I had a bunch of fun colors in these socks. The next thing we're gonna do is get out our pattern. This pattern will be linked down below so you can get to it. A couple things I wanted to talk about with this pattern is the um, yarn size, the needle size, the gauge, and the sizes for your finished sock. Um, all that information is gonna be in the pattern. Gauge really quickly, I just want to talk about because it does matter a little bit when you're knitting for something that's gonna fit your body. So gauge says approximately five stitches per inch and six rows per inch in stockinette thickness. And so what that means is we can look at this section down here where we're just knitting and we can take our ruler or, or if you have a knitting gauge ruler, that's super handy too. So then you can take your ruler and just place it on your stitches and just count. And each one of these little V's is a stitch. And if you're really, really new to knitting, you may wanna check out my knitting series. I talk about how to identify your stitches, how to count them, um, super slow motion, how to purl, how to knit, all of those. I would definitely suggest checking those out before you try and knit this sock. Uh, but if you've done that and you're ready to knit the socks, then this is what we're going to do. So you're going to count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Here's my one inch mark right here. Okay, so that's my gauge. I should have about five stitches per inch. If I have more than that, my socks might be too small. If I have less than that, my socks are going to be way too big. So when knitting garments, a lot of times people will go ahead and knit just a small swatch, meaning they'll knit just a section of knitting and then they'll go ahead and measure it just to make sure they're gonna get gauged so that that garment will fit them when they're done. And then you can do the same thing this way. So we can start at the tip of one of these stitches and one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six rows and five stitches across are gonna give us about a one by one inch square. So that's how you check your gauge. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but if your gauge is off, Typically what you'll do if you've purchased yarn that you know you wanna use, you can change your needle size and do another swatch. So if your gauge is way too big, like your stitches are too big, try going down a needle size and see if then you can get gauge using that same yarn. If your stitches are way too small, try going up a needle size and you can kind of experiment with it until you get gauge with that yarn that you want. Now every now and then that yarn is not gonna give you gauge no matter what you do, in which case you may need to change your yarn. But for the most part, if you're following the recommended yarn, for a specific pattern and you're following the needles, you'll 
get pretty close. Everybody's knitting gauge is a little bit different, so you just have to finagle it and you'll learn over time what works best for you. There's also an abbreviations chart in the pattern and I highly suggest taking a look at that um, because that is gonna help you as you see some of these instructions. And if you forget what those instructions are, you can always come back to the abbreviations page and see what that abbreviation meant. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here and we're gonna just do a long tail cast on and I will show you how to do this. I have a full video on how to do this as well. So something that you may want to check out if you're brand new. So for my pattern and my size, I'm gonna be casting on 40 stitches. Yours might be a little bit different based on your foot size. I'm gonna knit the small size, so that's gonna be 40 stitches. Now, we're gonna be doing a long tail cast on and, and that means we're gonna need this tail to, to cast on all of our stitches. And so how I estimate how many I'm going to need is I'll take my yarn and give myself a little tail. And then from that tail, I'm going to just wrap 10 stitches. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's not exactly perfect, but it's close enough. And now I can look at this and see that about this length is going to give me ten stitches and I need forty. You can measure that, or I'm looking on here and it's about this long, so I might actually just use it. So there's ten, twenty, thirty, 40 and I usually am a little bit more generous with my measuring just you know so that I don't run out of yarn Okay, the next thing we're gonna do then now that we have this long tail that we just measured is we're going to create a slip knot And so to create a slip knot you're just going to make a loop like this and then I push my tail through the loop and pull it through and then we just can put that on our needle and tighten it up and now we're going to go ahead and cast on our stitches. So this stitch that's already on here does count as one stitch. Now there's a lot of different ways to do cast on. This is just my way, uh, my method that I was taught. So that's what I'm going to teach you. So I've got my tail this way and my working ball this way. And then I'm gonna take my first and thumb fingers and I'm just gonna put them through those and kind of pull them up so that I have this triangle shape right here. So let's do that one more time. And how I do is I just grab it with these two fingers, put my fingers through, and now I have this triangle to work with. Now I'm gonna go under my thumb, and then over my finger, and pull that loop through, and then I just pull on the extra thread to tighten it. Okay, so now I have two stitches. So we're gonna do that again. Put your fingers in, make your triangle, go under your thumb, over your finger, pull that loop through, and tighten. If you're struggling with this and I am going a little bit too fast here for you for the cast on, please check out my video. I do have a long tail cast on video here on YouTube where I slow down quite a bit. I go in depth and show you exactly how to cast on um, just a little bit slower. So you can definitely check that out. This video, I really want to be more about making the sock. So any beginning tutorials like how to knit, how to purl, how to cast on, <laughs> all of those, I would refer you back to my original uh, individual how to knit series videos and then that way you can check those out and then come back here when you're ready to knit your sock. So again I'm just going to go ahead and finish casting on my 40 stitches. All right, so here are our 40 stitches and we do have a little tail left, which we want. So that turned out perfectly. And now we're going to spread these stitches out between three needles. I'm going to grab two more of my needles and I have 40 stitches. So I'm going to put, leave 20 on this needle. I'm gonna take 10 from this side and put it onto this needle and 10 from this side and put it on to this needle. And so you're gonna have needle one, two, and three. And to do that, I'm going to just keep my stitches nice and straight and just transfer them over. Let's tighten that up. Putting my needle in like I were just slipping these stitches. So I'm just putting them in just like this, just slipping those stitches on to my other needle. And I need 10, two more, nine, 10. All right, so now I can leave those. And don't worry about this one, it's loose. We can tighten that up in a minute. All right, so I've got 10 there. And now I'm going to turn this whole contraption over and put 10 on this one. And again, we're just slipping them so you don't wanna be twisting these stitches in any way. You're just slipping them straight across so as if there was no difference at all between the needles. All right, so we've got 10, 
10, and 20. You'll have twice the amount of stitches on needle two as you will on needles one and three. So this is 10, 20, and 10, and that makes our total of 40. If you were doing, say, 48 stitches, you'd have 24 here, and then 12 and 12. And so when we join this together in a little bit of a circle here, what you're looking at is this point down here, between needles one and three is actually your heel. This is kind of like the back of your leg and then this is gonna be the front of your leg or the top of your foot. And so most of the patterns or texture is gonna happen right here on needle two and then these are sort of your back side of your sock. And a lot of times, sometimes texture will go all the way around but sometimes it won't. Sometimes, especially when you're on the foot section, the texture is just gonna be here on the top and the bottom of the foot is gonna be just plain knitting because you don't want to be stepping on all that texture. It's not comfortable for your foot. So just so that you know which needles are where that's kind of the setup for this sock. Now this can be a little bit of finicky to start out with um, because we are going to have all of these needles sort of happening at once. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just rearrange so that my needles are facing me like this where I've got my loose threads coming off of needle three. Needle one is where I begin my cast on and then of course needle two is the one that has most stitches on it. And so you're gonna wanna orient yourself this way so that your yarn is coming off of your right hand or needle three. The other thing you wanna make sure also is that you haven't twisted your stitches. So all of my little cast on stitches right here are in the middle. You wouldn't want it twisted like this where you had cast on on the outside and cast on on the inside. You wanna make sure everything's nice and straight. And then you're gonna take needle one and we're just going to slide, see if I can do this, slide your stitches down towards the end and needle three and slide your stitches down towards the ends. We're gonna be working with these. We're gonna need one more of our needles now to continue on. So now that everything is nice and straight, I'm just gonna pick these needles up and put them together just like this. You can see my cast on edge is down here along the bottom. To be careful here, make sure you're not knitting with your tail, so set that aside or whatever you need to do. And the first thing we're gonna do is join these rounds so that we can start knitting in a circle. So we're going to go into this first stitch on needle number one, as if to knit. We're going to take our working yarn and move it behind our needle, so it's coming out from behind, and we're going to knit that stitch on to our new needle. So it's a little bit funky because you've got all these little needles here, but once you get going, it's gonna be a lot easier. So here is my working needle, and I can just do my first knit stitch. And we're gonna be doing a knit one, purl one rib. Okay, so we've knit our first stitch, and now we need to purl, so we're gonna pull our yarn to the front and just purl that second stitch and pull it off. Our next stitch is a knit. And if you can do your best just to ignore this needle and this needle and pretend like you really only have these two needles, that's all you're working with right now, it's gonna be a little bit less stressful. And once you get away from this one, it's also a little bit easier. So our next one is a knit, and we're just gonna be focusing on needle one and our working needle. And then we've got a purl. And then we've got a knit. And then a purl. And our last one is a purl. And the way that this pattern is set up is that every start of a needle should be a knit uh, for your ribbing. So if you get to here and you are starting on a purl, then you probably messed up somewhere back here. So just go back and just check, double check and see, make sure you didn't, you know, do something wrong. So now our working needle has become needle number one. Needle number two still has all the long ones and the needle number three has not been knit yet. All right, so now we can move over to needle number two. I'm gonna just scoop my stitches down so they're easier for me to get to. And again, my first stitch should always be a knit. So we are going to knit our first one, and then we have purl for our second. Okay, knit, purl. And we're gonna do that all the way down. So this whole rib section is just knit one, purl one. Again, my last stitch should be a purl if I did everything right. 
and it is. And again, our working needle has now become needle number two. Now we've knit across needle number two, so now we just need to go to our last needle and knit and purl across there. Again, our first stitch should be a knit stitch, and since we ended on a purl here, we are good to go. Okay, so here we are. We're back at our start and we've got needle one, two, and three. Everybody has one round of knitting on them. And as we get going here, your sock is gonna start coming down this way and it's just gonna start growing. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep knitting for a few rows and I'll probably speed that up for you guys. Uh, but that's it, it's super simple. And then we'll meet back here and we'll work on the leg. Now to start back over, you don't need to do anything other than put your yarn behind your last needle that you were working with because this first stitch is again a knit stitch. And we can just go in there and just continue going around. Now when I am transitioning from one needle to the next, I will make sure that first stitch is pulled a little bit tighter uh, just so that you don't have like a loose gap there or you can get what's called laddering which makes it look like there's a little ladder running between your needles um, because it's not so much evident when you have ribbing like this, but when you have like a, a stockinette part like this, sometimes you can see that uh, just because it gets loose between those two needles. So I just usually give it a little extra tug um, on the first and second stitches, and then I go ahead and go on my way. Now, just a little tip, say you get a phone call or somebody needs something and you set down your knitting and you walk away and you come back and you go to pick it up and you think to yourself, hmm, <laughs> which way? am I supposed to be going here? You can start off by looking at your needles and you know you've got one, two, and three. Okay, so that should help you in the direction that you should be knitting. But also you want to make sure that your working yarn is always coming off your right hand needle. You wouldn't want it this way where your working yarn is coming off your left hand needle. The working yarn should always be coming from your right. So when you pick up your work from having set it down, just make sure it's coming off the right hand needle and then you'll always be going in the correct direction. Okay, so here is our cuff and I decided to do 10 rows. It actually doesn't really matter as long as you write it down so that you know exactly what you did when you go to make your second sock. And if you're new to knitting, each one of these little V's is a row, so you can count your rows to see. This first teeny tiny V right here is your cast on edge, and most people don't count that as a stitch. Um, you can if you want to. Like I said, it doesn't actually matter um, for something like a cuff. Just make sure that you know how many you did and how you counted it and do the same thing on your second sock. But let's go ahead and count and I'll show you how to count up to see how many we did. So right here is gonna be our first stitch, this little V right here, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one right here, nine, and then the one on my stitch, uh, my needle is 10. So now we can move on. Now we need to switch to our larger needles. Like I mentioned before, you typically knit your rib cuff, especially on socks or hats or even um, sweaters. You usually knit them in a smaller needle size than what you're gonna knit the actual body of your project in. And so we knit these on a four. I'm gonna now be moving up to my five. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but uh, just if you're curious what I'm actually using, these are Knitter's Pride Dreams needles. They are a wooden needle and I love them so much. And for socks, I actually really prefer wooden needles to metal needles because your stitches don't slide off quite as easily. I mean, I could just slide this out if I really wanted to, but as you can see, there's a little bit of tug on there. If this was a metal needle, this thing would just come flying out every time you tried to do a row and it would be really frustrating. So I really prefer working with wooden needles or you could even do bamboo um, when you're doing something like this. So let's go ahead and transition to our larger needle and it's very easy. Um, all we have to do is just start knitting with this needle. And so in order to do that, and now we're also doing the body. So we're done doing our rib. So we're just gonna now just be doing straight knitting. And so I go ahead and just knit. And instead of purling like I was previously, I can just knit. And so this is actually gonna be so easy. I'm just knitting all the way across. And just the method of doing this, you're just transitioning 
very naturally on to this new size needle. And as soon as we get to here, this needle can now get put aside. Okay, we've got one needle transitioned and now we're going to our next needle and same deal. And just keep knitting. And once I make it all the way around, I am then completed with my transition to my larger needles. And since the, this is just a plain vanilla sock, we are not doing any texture on this. I just wanted something very easy uh, for you for the beginning, just so that you can get the sock pattern down. The heels, the cuffs, the gusset, all of that is gonna be sort of complicated enough for a new knitter. I think that just having a plain vanilla sock is the best way to go. And also, if you have chosen a yarn that is color changing in any way or anything, uh, that would be perfect for this project. Okay, now we just have our last needle. All right, now we have effectively transitioned to our larger needles. We can set these aside. We won't actually be using these anymore. We only use them for the cuff. That's why I told you if you only had one size, not to run out and buy another size of needles. You don't need to do that. So here we are. And actually, this is what it's looking like. So we've knit this portion right here. And then now we're gonna be working on the leg portion. Now this particular sock actually has a pretty long leg just because it has all of this color work in it. We're obviously not gonna be doing any of that. So you can make it as long as you want or as short as you want, totally up to you. Uh, keep in mind the longer that you make this, um, you're gonna have to do that on the second sock. So now we're going to go ahead and just continue knitting the leg of our sock until it is as long as we want. Again, just a little tip, when you get to the second stitch, pull it a little bit tighter, your second stitch, not your first stitch, your second stitch, and that will help any laddering or any uh, weird spacing that is gonna start happening in between these needles. So let's go ahead and just keep on knitting, just keep knitting, put on a good movie, um, you know, do whatever you enjoy, a podcast, any of those things, and go ahead and finish knitting your sock to the length that you want it. So I'm going to go ahead, put on a movie, finish working on the body of my sock, and then I will meet you back. So welcome back to the next section in our simple sock sew along. And I've gone ahead and stopped my sock here. So I did 10 rows of the ribbing and then 10 rows of just the plain knitting. And I'm gonna just make these little shorty socks, but you can make this section however long you want. We are right here. Um, so you can make them really long if you want for the purposes of this video. I'm just gonna do a little shorty because it'll be um, just a little bit faster. Plus they're gonna still be super cute. And now we're gonna be ready to work on our heel section. So the heel section is gonna be worked on needles one and three. Needle two, we're gonna just completely leave alone. And as a matter of fact, I have a couple of these little end stoppers that I can put on here just to make sure that my stitches don't come off. It's also gonna help me realize I'm not working on this needle right now. And these are just little needle stoppers. These are from, um, these are Lori Holt. I think I got them at Fat Quarter Shop. So there's lots of places you can get these. I'm not gonna put this other one on right now and I'm gonna tell you why. I like to do my heels a little bit differently um, than probably most patterns, but I am gonna show you why. I think it creates a really nice um, join. You can't really see it, almost looks seamless. You can't really see any jogs anywhere. Everything looks really nice and clean. So I'm gonna show you how I like to do that. And this is when I'm changing colors. I do it a little bit differently if I'm gonna be doing a heel in the same color because the colors all blend together and you don't have to do anything you know, fancy. Okay, so for the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get my yarn. I wanna leave my yarn up here on needle two ready for me once I'm done doing my heel, ready for me to knit around with. And so to get that there, I'm going to go ahead and just knit the stitches from needle one on to needle three. And this is totally optional, but before I get started, I am going to just toss a stitch marker on here so that I remember which ones are supposed to be on which needle. Um, and it's not gonna be super important, but just to keep you oriented. So now we're just gonna go ahead and knit all the stitches from one on to three. Okay, we have our last one here. Okay, and so these stitches are the stitches we're going to use for our heel now. And now I'm gonna do something a little bit different um, than probably what you've seen in the past, but you're gonna see why this is gonna really help us out later. I'm gonna knit just the first stitch from my second needle. 
So I'm just going to knit it and then I'm going to go ahead and slide it back onto two. And what that's doing is just putting my yarn right here at the beginning of my uh, needle number two. And once we go ahead and knit our heel and then we come back around, this is just going to be ready for us to pick up later. So now we can just set that aside. You don't want to cut this yarn, so just set your main color aside for now. We're not going to be working with that. We're going to just go ahead and work with our contrast color for our heel. And the way I like to do that is to turn my work so that the, the needle that we're working on, needles one and three, are in the back of my work. We're going to pick up our yarn and we're going to purl across all these to join this yarn. And this is going to give us a really nice, even join just right here. You can't even tell it, so it doesn't even look like there's any join marks or anything like that. It's just a nice, clean, crisp line between our main color and our contrast color. I'm just going to go in as if to purl. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a tail, and then I'm gonna put that loop on my needle and just pull it through. So I'm just putting that on just like that, and then we're just gonna pull that through and that's our first stitch. And then we can tighten up this tail later. This stitch is just kind of loose right now, but don't worry about that. Now we're just going to purl all the way across to the end of our needle. And when we get to our stitch marker, we're just gonna push it over. We're at our stitch marker. We're just gonna scoot it over to the other one. Don't worry about it. It's just a placeholder so that we know where we are. Okay, and now we've got our contrast color joined. Now for the rest of the heel, we're gonna be repeating two rows. The first row is gonna be a slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, all the way across. We're gonna turn our work, we'll slip one and purl back across. So we're just gonna be working back and forth this heel. And um, I like to keep my working yarn, my main color over here on the left, and I keep my working or contrast color over here on the right so they don't get tangled up as I'm going. So let's go ahead and just do that. So we're just going to slip this first one, and as you can see it's kind of loose so I just tighten it, and then we're going to knit one, and then slip one, and we're slipping it purl wise so we're just moving it from one needle to the other. We aren't twisting it around or anything like that. So slip one, knit one, all the way across. And this actually goes really fast, and I'll show you here in a little bit so that you can tell what the slips, um, oops, what the slips and the knits look like. And your last one should always be a knit if you did it in the right order. So your first stitch is going to be a slip, and your last one's going to be a knit. All right, now we're going to take our work, and we're just going to turn it around. Again, we're just ignoring needle number two here, and don't worry if this gets loose, you can always just tighten that later. We're gonna tighten up this stitch just a little bit. I like to tuck my tail down inside. I do kind of tug on it to just keep it nice and tight, but that way I don't get it confused with the one I should be working with. So now we're just going to, again, purl back across. When we get to our marker, we're just gonna slip it over. And you don't have to put that marker there if you don't want to. Um, I like to just put it there just so I know where the middle of my row is. Okay. And your last stitch will always be a purl. So now I'm just gonna repeat rows one and two for a total of 10 um, rows each for the small sock, which is the one I'm doing, 12 or 14 times each if you're doing the medium or large. So here, if we look at our finished one, these stitches that look larger, this row, like right here, are our slip stitches. These are the ones that we knit in our slip stitches. So you can see it gives it a little bit of extra cushion and it gives it a little bit of extra strength. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these rows. So I have a total of 20 rows worked for my heel and then I'll meet you back here and show you how to turn the heel. Okay, so I have finished doing all of my repeats of rows one and two, and just really quickly, if you get lost on this, I just wanted to show you how to count your stitches. I find it easier to count the slip stitches because they're just easier to see. So we need to do um, 10 rows of each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you're gonna count this one on your hook or your needle, so 10. 
Okay, so that's just an easy way to count and make sure that you've got the right amount. Now we're gonna work on our heel turn and we finished on a round two, which was a purl across. So we should be on the right side of our work and you're just gonna follow the pattern. This is gonna be a little bit different based on which size sock you're making. I'm making the smaller one. And so we're first going to slip one stitch and then we're going to just knit all the way for 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 is gonna be one past your little stitch marker there. We're just knitting to one past halfway, okay? And then now my pattern says to slip, slip, knit, and then knit one. Slip, slip, knit looks like this. You're gonna slip as if to knit, so there's one, and you're gonna slip another one, so slip, slip, and then we're gonna knit these stitches. Now, I'll show you a shortcut on the next round, but if you're new, you're gonna slip both of those stitches back on to your first needle, and then just knit them through the back loop, like that. Okay, and then we're gonna knit one, and we're gonna turn our work around. So you're not going all the way to the end of your row. Okay, now we're going to slip one purl-wise. So slip one, purl three, one, two, slip our marker, and three. Now we're gonna purl two together, so that just means you grab one and two. So you've got two like that, and we're just gonna purl those two together, so we're decreasing there. And then we're gonna purl one, and we're gonna turn our work. Now one thing you'll notice now is I've got a bit of a gap. I've got a gap here, and I've got a gap here. And so the instructions are now gonna to say to knit within a stitch of your gap. So you're gonna be looking for this gap wherever there's a space, and that's what you're going to knit to. So we're now on row three of our heel. So it says slip one, and then knit to within one stitch of your gap. So we're gonna knit, don't worry about the marker, knit, and here we are. Here's one stitch before our gap. Again, we're gonna slip, slip, knit, knit one and then turn. So slip one, slip two. I just leave them on my right hand needle and just stick this back in and knit them together. Knit one and turn our work. And we're starting to get our little heel turn right here. All right, and now we're on row four. Row four is slip one, purl wise, and then we're gonna purl to one stitch before that gap. And I'll usually try and find my gap before I get too far. So if you just pull your stitches apart, you can see that there's a gap right here. So I'll usually just do that before I get to it so I know what I'm looking for. So we're gonna go to one stitch before that, which is this one. Now we're gonna just purl these two together. So grab that one, grab your second one, purl them together, and purl one and turn. And we're gonna just keep repeating those two rows, rows three and four, until we've worked all of our stitches and we no longer have a gap. So we've got a gap here. So now we're gonna repeat row three again. So we're gonna slip one and knit to within one stitch of our gap. And our gap is over here. Okay. And now we're gonna slip, slip, knit those two together. So slip, slip, pick them both up and knit. Knit one and turn. And now we're on row four. So slip one, purl to within one stitch of your gap. And again, I'm gonna look for that gap, it's right here. Okay, and then we're gonna purl these two together and purl one. Okay, now we only have a couple more stitches to work. We're gonna turn our work again. Again, we're going to slip one, knit to within one stitch of our gap, which is clear down here. As you can see, our gap is scooting farther and farther away. Oh, you wanna make sure your yarn is coming out from the back. I, I don't know if you saw that, but I had my needle in front of it, don't do that. Slip one, knit. We're 
getting there. Here's our gap. So we're stopping one stitch before our gap and we're gonna again slip slip knit these together. Knit one. So now we've worked all those. Now we just need to come back across. So slip one, purl to within one stitch of our gap. Okay, so here's our gap. We're gonna knit or purl those two together. Purl one. And then check it out. We've got our cute little heel turn all completed. Isn't that cute? Okay, so very easy. And you should have, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Okay, so we are, we are looking good. All right, so now we're ready to move on to the next section, which is the gusset. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here. So go ahead and catch up, finish your heel, and then I will meet you back here. All right, welcome back to the next part of our beginning sock tutorial. We have successfully created our heel section. We did the little heel turn in the last video and now we're ready to move on to our gusset. I did show that this part right here is the gusset where we're decreasing our stitches to get back down to our original stitch count so that it'll fit on our foot. So let's go ahead and move on. Now I mentioned last video that I like to do my heels a little bit different and you'll know we did an extra stitch right here so that our working or main color yarn is just hanging out right here waiting for us. That's gonna come in really handy right now and you'll see why. Okay, so we have finished our heel on the wrong side. So we need to turn it back around and now we need to pick up all these stitches here, knit across, pick up the rest of these stitches and back to our little stitch marker. I'm going to, some people like to change color right now and just pick up with the main color, like cut this off, pick up with the main color and start knitting again. I don't like to do that and I'll show you why. I think it creates a much um, more seamless join to do it the way that I'm about to show you. So you can't really see any joins in any places where we added this new color. It's just nice and seamless looking. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and slip this first stitch and then just knit across with my heel color. We're just gonna knit all the way across. Okay, and now we need to pick up these stitches and I like to pick them up again, still in my heel color. It just looks a lot cleaner and nicer and also it's gonna put me back up here and then I can pick up my main color and just keep on going. So to pick up stitches, for the small sock, you're gonna to wanna to refer to the pattern. It'll tell you how many to pick up based on the size sock you knit. For the small pattern, we're gonna pick up 10 rows or 10 stitches on each of these sides. Whatever you pick up on this side, you're gonna to wanna to pick up on this side. So just remember if for some reason you pick up an extra stitch along here, just make sure you do it on the other side and you'll be fine. So how I like to pick up stitches, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. So, so I just find this row right here that looks like these, and I actually just pick up these stitches all right in here. Now we've got a loose thread right here and we can use this to tighten up once we pick up all these stitches. So don't worry if it kind of loosens up a little bit on you. So I just go through and just pick those up just like this. Um, I know there's a lot of ways to do this. So if you have something that's easier, go ahead and do that. This just has been, has worked for me. So let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we'll grab one more. Okay. So we have 10 stitches there, one for each stitch along there. And now, I'm gonna grab another needle because it's gonna be kind of fiddly to try and you know keep working on this heel needle for now. And we're going to go ahead and just knit these. So I'm just going to, they're kind of going the wrong way, but it won't matter. So I'm just gonna knit through all of those 10 stitches to get myself back up to my blue yarn. Okay, now we're back up to where we started our heel. We're back up to where we left off our blue yarn. And now we can go ahead and just trim off this accent color. So just get rid of that. And we can just hang on to these. We're gonna leave these loose. I like to leave these loose um, until I'm done with my sock. Then when I flip it right side out, I can use these to kind of tighten up if there's any little, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a gap right here where um, this joins. You'll see like 
maybe you can kind of see right there I have just a little bit of a gap. Um, and so I like to use these to close that gap up. Okay, so we're just gonna leave those there for right now. And now we can take off our little markers that we're holding our stitches in place. Now remember that we knit this one already. This stitch was already knit. So we don't wanna re-knit that stitch. We're just going to slide it over onto our needle because it's already knit. And now we can just take this, we can tighten that up. And as you see, because we had just already knit this stitch, it's just ready to go and it actually kind of tightens up any little hole that might be there. So now we can just knit all the way across our second needle. And the second needle is the top of our foot. It's the part that's gonna go on the top of our foot. Okay, and now we're going to pick up, just like we did on this side, whatever stitches we picked up on this side, we're gonna pick up over here. So let's turn it this way, it'll be a little bit easier. So I picked up 10, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And this is where that fifth needle that comes in your package comes in handy. All right, so now we're just gonna knit down this side. If you feel like you're gonna have a hole, you can pick up this bar in here, but honestly, I feel like it makes it a little bit worse. And doing it this way with the yarn already there for me, um, I feel like it just doesn't leave a hole. So um, you can, you know, you can do what you need to do so that you don't have a hole right there. But we're just gonna pull that nice and snug and knit all the way down our picked up stitches. And this is gonna be a really nice, clean transition you'll see when we're done. So here we are. And now I want to get back to my three needle setup. So what's gonna happen is these six stitches right here are gonna go back onto needle one, and these six stitches are gonna go back onto needle three. And that's why I put this little marker here so I know which stitches were supposed to be where. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just knit those right on just like this. If it's a little bit finicky, you can knit them and then just slip them over later, but I feel like this works just fine. So we're gonna knit all the way to our marker. Remove our marker, we don't need that anymore. And that's needle three. And now I wanna get these six stitches onto needle one. So I'm just going to slide them onto needle one. And you don't wanna twist them or anything, so just slide them straight over. Okay, so now we're back at our one, two, three setup, and now we can continue on with our sock. Now I do one more round of the solid color just to get everything organized before I start doing my decreases. We're just gonna go ahead and knit a full round of our main color. Okay, this stitch right here is gonna be just super loose because those threads are loose, so just give them a little tug, tighten them all up and keep going. And when I'm in between needles like this, I will give these just a little tug, tighten up your second stitch, and then you can keep going. Now these ones I'll kind of tuck down inside just so they're out of my way, and I'll even sometimes pull them out the bottom down here. That way I can, if I need to, I can just grab them and tug on them, but they're out of my way while I'm knitting. Here is what our setup is looking like. Now we're ready to begin our decreases for our gusset section. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first step says to knit across to the last three stitches on our needle. So knit, knit, knit. One, two, three. Okay, so we knit um, to the last three stitches before our second needle, and we're going to knit two together. So we're just gonna take two, knit two together, and then knit one, the last one, and that's that first round. We're simply going to knit across our second needle. So this second needle is always just gonna be getting knit across. You don't do anything fancy here. All right, so we knit just across that second needle, and now over here, again, like I said, with these three stitches, so we're going to knit one, 
and then we're going to slip slip knit. So essentially what we're doing, so slip slip knit, this is just like the one I showed you before, slip slip knit, and then we're gonna knit all the way back to the end of this third needle. All right, so we just finished our first round, which is what's called a decrease round. So on these last three stitches, we knit two together, so we decreased one stitch there. And on these, we did the slip slip stitch, so we decreased one here. Our next round, or round two, is just going to be a simple knit. So we're just gonna knit all the way around. And then we're gonna repeat rounds one and two, so one decrease round, one knit round, until we're back to the initial stitch count that we had when we were up here. So we'll have 10 stitches, 20, and 10 for this small size. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another round just to show you. Okay, so we have two rounds now done. We did the decrease round and the knit round, and now we just need to repeat those two rounds until we're back to our initial stitch count. If you're new, I would suggest using a row counter, or you can just make little marks on your paper, or uh, just something to help you remember which round you're on so that you don't get lost. Uh, between the knit and decrease rounds. Okay, so this is a decrease round, so we made it all the way to our last three stitches. And for this round, round one, we're just going to knit two together and knit one. All right, and we're gonna knit across needle two. And now we decrease on needle three. So we knit one, and we're going to slip, slip, knit this decrease. Slip, slip, and then knit those two together. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing mine, and then you go ahead and finish doing yours, and I will meet you back here and show you what it looks like when we're done doing all of our decreases. All right, so I have decreased so that I'm back to my original stitch count. So I've got 20, 10, and 10. And here is what my little gusset is looking like. So I've got this nice little decrease right here, and that's this section right here. Here, I can turn this so it's facing <laughs> the same way. Okay, so now we've got this section with our little gusset right here. And then once you get back, to your original stitch count, all that you have to do is just knit, 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 knit in however many rounds it takes to get your sock to the length that you want for your foot. And you're gonna stop as soon as your sock reaches one and a half inches shorter than your desired length. And that's where one of these sock sticks can kind of come in handy. Now you can use this a couple of ways. You can stick this in here to your heel to measure you know, how high your socks are to make sure they're the same length. I actually just count my rows so that I can make sure they're the same length. The other way you can use this is to just put it into your heel so that that curved edge is right on the heel. And then this way you can see how far you have to go until again, like I said, you're that one and a half inches away from your toe. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue knitting. I will speed some up on video here so you can watch, but it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna knit until my sock is the desired length for my foot. Welcome back to the last part of our sock knitting video. I have gone ahead and just knit my sock to the desired length. So here's what it is looking like. So really nice. And now we're just needing to add the toe, which is really fast and easy. So we will be finishing this sock today. First thing I'm gonna do is just snip off my main color and just get that out of my way. And then now I have my contrast color for my toe. Now you could just keep working with your main color if you don't wanna do contrast colors. So for our first round, I'm actually just gonna do a full round of knit just to switch to our contrast color so it's got a nice even um, row before we start doing our decreases for our toe. I leave about, probably about six or so inches for my tail, I don't measure it. And I just put that loop right over my needle and just go ahead and pull it off. And I don't worry about tightening it up, I just try and get it off, off the needle first. This tail I'm actually going to just dangle. This tail I'm going to weave in as I go. So to weave in my tail, I'm going to take my tail yarn and just place it on top of my new working yarn so that every time I make a stitch, that tail is secure. And I'll go ahead and kind of pull it now just so that it's nice and tight. 
just kind of snug everything up so I don't have a hole there. Then when I go back to weave in this tail, I'm gonna weave it in going this way and it'll kind of close up any gap you might have there where you switched colors of yarn. Okay, so again, I'm just going to wrap my tail over the top of my working yarn. So it looks just like that. And then go ahead and knit across all the way around. I'm gonna do one full row of knit with our new color. And if you don't wanna weave in this tail as you go, you certainly don't have to. You can weave them in when you're done. I just like to kinda of do it as I'm going here. It's just one less thing for me to weave in later. And I'm just gonna do one more here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop that. And this I'll just tighten up like I said when I get to my next round and when I weave in this tail so there won't be any holes or anything like that happening where we did our color change. And now I can just keep on knitting. All right, so we have knit our first full round to just change to our contrast color. And now we can start working on our toe decreases. Before I do that, I'm just going to take these tails and just tuck them inside my sock so they are out of my way and I'm not you know, getting confused as to what I'm doing here. All right, so for this first round, we're basically gonna be doing decreases on both sides of our needle here. And that's what gives you this kind of decreased nice rounded toe right here. So to do the decreases, so we've got needles one, two, and three. So we're gonna knit to within three stitches before our instep, which is needle two. And again, this first stitch will be a little bit loose, but don't worry, you can tighten that up. I'll tighten that up as I'm knitting, but also um, when we weave in this end. So I'm just gonna kind of pull on that second stitch a little to tighten this round up. Okay, so we're knitting to within three stitches before our instep. We're going to knit these two together and then just knit that one. And so that's gonna be our first decrease. So knit two together and knit one. And now we're going to turn onto our second needle, and we're also going to do a decrease with these three stitches. So we're gonna knit one, knit that first one, and now we're going to do a slip, slip, knit. So slip, slip as if to knit, and then you're going to knit those two together. And I'll do that again so you'll see it. And then we're just gonna knit across to the last three stitches on the second needle. Okay, so we're here at the last three stitches, and now we're going to knit two together, and then knit one. All right, so that is the second needle, and then for our third needle, we're, again, we're gonna do a decrease right here within these three stitches. So we're going to knit one, and then we're gonna do another slip, slip, knit. So we're gonna slip, as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then knit those two together. Okay, and then knit all the way back to our start. And that is just round one. And we're gonna be alternating every other round with a decrease round and then just a plain knit round. And that'll give us a really nice um, gradual decrease in our toe. If you're getting confused between your knit rounds and your decrease rounds. You can look and see that we've got two yarns going around this one stitch. You can see that you have one, two stitches versus one. So you know that your previous round was a decrease. Um, I also like to just use a little piece of tape, washi tape or highlighter tape, and then that way I can just move it back and forth so I know which round I'm on. And by the way, if you accidentally forget and do 
two rounds of knit or two rounds of decreases, it's okay. <laughs> I think if anyone's looking at your toe close enough to tell you that you skipped a decrease row, um, they're looking at your toe too closely. <laughs> Find new friends. All right, so we're back to our front. So we did one round of decreases and one round of knits. We're gonna be repeating those two rounds until we have half the number of stitches on our needles as when we started. So I started with 40 stitches, so I'm going to repeat these rounds until I have 20 stitches left. Okay, so here we are, we've got 10, five, and five. And then to get my yarn over here to my edge, I'm going to knit the remaining loops on my first needle onto my third needle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just knit across these stitches. All right, now I've just got two needles and here's what our toe is looking like, very nice. All right, and now we just need to seam up this toe and we're gonna be using what's called the Kitchener stitch. Don't um, freak out, a lot of people are nervous about that. Um, I think it's actually pretty easy and it's a great way to finish up your toe on your sock. Now, I go ahead and leave a nice long tail for myself. This is probably about 15 inches, this is probably too long, but I like to have too much just in case. And then the other thing you're gonna need is some sort of a yarn needle. I like these clover gold ones. They have a little bit of a bend on the tip here and I think it just makes it a little bit easier, but you can use whatever you have. So we're gonna go ahead and thread our yarn onto our needle and then we're going to basically just seam these two rounds together. So that's why you want to make sure you have the same amount of stitches on both. I started with 40, so now I have 10 and 10. And we're gonna start out with our yarn coming out from behind us so that you don't want it this way with your yarn coming from your left side. We're gonna work from right to left across our needles. So we want our yarn coming off of the needle behind. And the first thing we're gonna do is purl go as if to purl the first stitch with our needle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and purl it and we're gonna leave that on. And then we're going to go as if to knit this back stitch. And I'm coming underneath my first needle just because I don't want my yarn looping over and making like an extra loop. Okay, so we're gonna go as if to knit and just leave that on. And that's just kind of your setup round. And now we're going to be doing a repeat for the rest of the way, so that just gets us ready. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to knit the front stitch and pull it off. And I'm just always kind of tightening this as I go. Now we're going to purl that front stitch, but we're going to leave it on. So we just got our first stitch off, and just be careful that they don't slide off your, your needles here. The next thing we're gonna do is purl the back stitch. And again, I'm keeping my yarn underneath this. We don't want this coming over the top. We want our yarn going under. So I'm gonna go as if to purl this stitch in the back, and we're going to pull it off. And just tighten that up. And then we're going to knit the back and leave it on. And I will put these instructions in below, but essentially from now on, we're going to be knit the front, take it off, purl the front, leave it on, purl the back, take it off, knit the back, leave it on. And we're gonna do that until we work all the way across our stitches. Okay, so we're starting over. So we're knitting the front and taking it off. Make sure you don't, oops, I think I lost my back loop. And then purl the front, leave it on. Purl the back, take it off. Knit the back, leave it on. Knit front, take it off. And all the while, I'm kind of making sure this yarn is staying tight. You don't want it accidentally weaving its way around your toe over here. And then purl the front, leave it on. Okay. Purl the back, take it off. Knit the back, leave it on. Knit front, take off. This is what you wanna avoid, this little loop right there. Purl front, leave on. Purl back, take it off. Knit the back, leave it on. 
knit the front, take it off, purl the front, leave it on, purl the back, take it off, knit the back, leave it on, knit the front, take it off, purl, leave it on, purl, take it off, knit, leave it on. Knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. Now we're down to our last two stitches and we're going to knit front, take it off, and purl back, take it off. And look at this beautiful join that that creates. Right there, you can't even see that. Now you do have a couple little um, there's a little dot right here, and then this one obviously is sticking out right here. So now all we need to do is weave in our ends, and when I go to weave in this end, I'll just weave it in down this direction. And when you pull that end in, it looks beautiful. You just can't even see that there. And then look at this join. Very nice join as well. All right, and we're basically done with our sock. Now all we have to do is weave in our ends. And so I'll just flip it inside out and find all of my ends and just weave them in. And this one is from the toe. I just start, doesn't matter where you start. Um, for the toe, I don't like to have ends anywhere where I might be stepping on them. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and weave them in down this side edge. And I'll just go under a few and just give it a little tug. And then I'll usually go back up a few. And then stretch it out. And then I'll cut it leaving just a little bit so that it doesn't pop out. Um, if I block my socks or anything like that, that gives me just a little bit of wiggle room. Let's go ahead and do these down here. You can see this is where I wove it in as I was going. I am still going to take this and just maybe run a few stitches up the side. There's not really any rule. I just like to kind of give it a little bit of extra. All right, that is it for our easy sock knitting video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So here you should have a fun finished pair of socks. If you haven't already, you just need to go and make your second one. Please feel free to refer back to this video or the PDF pattern to help you along. Now, like I mentioned at the very beginning, this pattern is actually based off of a sock pattern that I released at Christmas time, and that one has color work. So if you guys would like to see a tutorial on how to do color work, make sure to leave that in the comment section below, and I will see if I can do one of those for you guys as well. Uh, but I did want to get a cute beginning sock tutorial pattern for you out there so that you could get started making socks. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun videos like this for you. You can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.